Ladies and gentlemen, would like to introduce Ron and Fez on Raw Dog. This is serious. XM Comedy Channel 99. What's this from, Shelbs? You probably recognize that, like the beginning of every Tarantino movie. He has that, like, old school kind of splice goes across. It's just the beginning. He doesn't play it this long. It's called. So it's like it used to be the theater thing, right? Like he's pretending it's a, a 1970s theater. It's like a grindhouse thing. Like the, it's yeah. all like grainy kind of footage. Yeah, but I, I think that that piece was used. In the old movie theaters. I don't know who, like, it, it belonged to whatever the AMC of the day was. I'm going to just say that. Uh, we brought up Paul O. He's got a 10-minute rant about Woody Allen. And he goes, this is for the eye bang if it's not too hot. And I go, it's not too hot. It just dated. This all went back to last winter. Paul O., how are you? Hi, oh, Paul O. You like the movie. Yeah, you like the movie, too, Paul. How are you? Yeah, very good. Very good. I don't. I do think it's hot because I think it's an ongoing thing. I don't think it's ever going to get resolved, and until it's resolved, it's always going to be a, a, an open wound. For who? My, I'm Woody. fine. <laughs> well, I understand you're fine. It's not. I mean, problem, he's trying to say the accusations against Mr. Woody Allen as a pedophile. It's. Now, you, here's my problem with your writing, Paul. You do not take a personal stand on whether you think there's guilt or in- innocence. You basically write and talk for 10 minutes saying this is a horrible thing. I hope it's not true. And yet, if it's not true, it's still horrible. <laughs> Well, I think it, I think the problem is, is that there's a, there's a little bit of a, a court of public opinion going on in a media circus for a while, and it's basically an accusation. I mean, the accusations are there. Why is your face darked out? Like maybe, <laughs> <laughs> like you were there and you're a pedophile. And where did you do this from? Spain? What is behind you? <laughs> I, was, I had I I should have done it in my room. I have much better acoustics in my room. Where are That's you? Where, uh, I'm in a conference room. No, but what is this place that you're at? Yeah, I'm actually at the library conference room. <laughs> so you sit in the library and shoot a YouTube <laughs> up on your face for 10 minutes where your face well, is darked out. I'm now in favor of the no talking rule in the library. <laughs> I understand. I wrote the thing, and, you know... So, so but why are you two months late with this opinion? It really goes <laughs> back to the Golden Globes. Well, first of all, it's the Golden Globes, the letter in the Times, Lena Dunham. I mean, Liam Neeson was talking about stuff yesterday. <laughs> this is going to be going on forever. Well, what did yesterday? Liam, what well, did Liam, Liam Neeson Neeson's to, yeah. talking about it... <laughs> what did Liam Neeson have to do with anything? Liam Neeson, he was uh, talking about naked pictures of Sun Yi that, that were discussed at the time when all of this broke. Well, originally. what did he say? He saw them? <laughs> he said that, you know, Woody was filming husbands and wives, and then he took off for a half an hour with no explanation. And he came back, and my lawyer, you know, said there were naked pictures. You know, uh, that, that me... I have a that, unique set of talents <laughs> able to deal with this. I have a very specific set of <laughs> photographs. <laughs> it's just it's weird to imagine Paul being in a library where there's like students and like old professors researching and then he's just at a table just rambling for ten minutes at, about Woody Allen. At best it's a library in a monastery. Look at this fucking place. <laughs> it doesn't exist in this country. Like parapets. <laughs> yeah. It's eighteen hundreds Madrid that he did this from. <laughs> you you should you should be doing something on time travel, you fucking weirdo. I never saw someone inside a sandcastle before. But not for or I, against time I travel, rushed, just to be yeah. general. Why is the camera so close to your face? Did you attach a GoPro to a cold sore? Well, it's no, his selfies, his little fucking alligator arms that he has. I didn't drag a tripod in or anything. I just we understand, hand. Paul. Paul, no one's attacking you on that. What, do you think that Woody Allen is innocent or guilty? I believe he's not guilty. I believe he might have had inappropriate 
touching of some sort because that's know, guilty. <laughs> inappropriate, <laughs> inappropriate touching of a child is guilty. But, but, but not if you're, you're the father and daughter. I mean, inappropriate meaning is a vague concept. I'm not sure she says something very vague that he brought her up to the attic and she said play with the trains while he was doing something behind her. This is what she said. I don't know. That does sound very bad, but she's not exactly specific. So what are you saying that he did, in your opinion? She also did say sexually assault after, after the train thing. She she says, oh, well, he'd like to stick his thumb in my mouth. He'd like to, you know, uh, I'd sleep in the bed with him in his underwear. I mean, these are not, is this exactly inappropriate things? I it, her, This is the most pointed things that are being said right. from Dylan herself. And this is all occurring when she was seven years old. And she has no relationship since seven years old with Woody Allen. So, I mean, all of the anger and animosity that was going on at the time, I mean, I'm of the personal opinion that it's probably not true, certainly not the way that she thinks that she remembers it. Does anybody think that Woody's guilty? Anyone here? I don't. Uh, I think so. You do think that he's guilty? Yeah, I think he's guilty, but... I mean, and I'm a huge fan of his work and everything. Mm-hmm. I think he's guilty, but I also think that uh, Mia Farrow used Dylan as a as a pawn in a lot of ways. Because I mean, I read about it and like this wasn't just like one incident. Right. This was like a thing for years of like him going into counseling because they were like on the beach when she was four and he was like rubbing like lotion in her butt crack like in front of the whole family and like all this weird. Well, he's never been on the beach in his life. <laughs> Woody Allen is never. Now I know. <laughs> that that's never happened, but uh, and but you so, think she, and so she would do all this stuff, but like that's just not like me. wanted it to happen. Well, not that she want, but it's like if you're ena- not, not enabling, but like if you think that somebody's and she was accusing him from when Dylan was two mm-hmm. of lusting after her, and if you think your boyfriend is lusting after your two-year-old daughter you don't say like hey go into treatment you say like yeah get the fuck away you don't like hang out with him for another five years and then Mm. when he starts dating sunya you still invite him up to the house in connecticut i mean like there's the dan perlman blaming the victims i'm saying Um, they're 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 all victims you're saying yeah yeah everybody's a victim i feel bad for dylan because i feel like they yeah i mean i think he did it and i think she helped do it yeah so could you still see his movies? Would you go to Blue Jasmine and enjoy it still? Yeah, I went. I saw Blue Jasmine. Knowing that in your mind, this is the work of a pedophile. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's I mean, but when you start to get into that game. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you, that, that's that the game rules, that we're in. The pet no, game. Uh, <laughs> the uh, you're, you're ruling out almost everybody's. I mean, I, if people don't want to see the movies because yeah. they hate them, like, yeah, I totally understand that. But you said you wouldn't. You don't judge the artist. You judge the art. I mean, in some in some cases, that's just my person. If other, maybe there are other people that if they do something like, ah, I don't want to support them. I mean, it's yeah. a totally subjective thing. I don't, I don't have some hard rule of see, like. Here's the funny thing about it. I kind of think that. When I looked at Wolf of Wall Street, I kind of feel like that's somewhat of an immoral film to show young people. But right. I don't think that that Marty is an immoral person. Uh, I think there's definitely more morality to Blue Jasmine than there <laughs> is to Wolf of Wall Street. And they're both kind of about the same topic. You know what I mean? Right. But I, I think that if you watched Wolf of Wall Street... You wouldn't think, hey, if I do bad things, I hurt people. They just showed people doing bad things and then partying and boogieing. And I had this uh, conversation with people. Uh, one disagreed with me. Well, the, in Wolf of Wall Street, they showed that he could have even he didn't enough to do time. You know, he he chose to fucking run the company or whatever afterwards. Like, but he, he, but they, even they at the point that he. Uh, you know, ratted out his friends, there was nothing about him. That showed any morality to anyone, children, wife, nothing. Yeah, even at the end, it's he's just doing the same. And what they do, they show the FBI guy, FBI guy like he's a fucking scumbag sitting in a fucking train. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's heading back to a story, like a fucking know nothing <laughs> radio hey, producer. Well, 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 come on, <laughs> don't you have to pull those parallels together? There's no point in that. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, Paulo, make a fucking stand here. 
What is your stand uh, like, for once in your life? Well, I, I made a comparison in the article that I wrote to Phil Spector. Now, Phil Spector was a freak, and uh, David Mamet puts out this very interesting movie about him with Al Pacino, and, and it's very clear that, as far as he was concerned, Phil Spector was innocent and not should not have been convicted. But he was convicted in a second trial, and that's because... Basically, in the court of public opinion, people don't give a shit. They think he's a freak. They think he's just been doing freaky things his whole life. Screw well, him. I, I mean, I didn't follow the trial, but I've read plenty of articles about him that it looked like a slam dunk that he killed that girl. Absolutely not. Absolutely no way he could have pulled the trigger. He it, came it, out and told the police, I, or the limo driver, one or the other, that I killed her. But that's exactly what I'm talking about. This is all rumor and things that got strung together. And it, it may have been a, a remark that he made that sounded like something. This is, what, this is exactly the same kind of thing. What happens here is a lot of people just hear a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and they make an opinion. And in my opinion, that's why this is never going to get properly addressed, because it's never going to go to trial. It's never going to have any kind of... Well, it can't have go to trial now. They, they no. actually put it up for trial when it happened. And the they said there wasn't enough evidence, and they didn't believe, you know, they didn't believe in what the little girl was saying at the time. So and no, it won't go he, to a fucking trial. No, and he took. Yeah. Also, he took the I, lie detector test. Right. I don't think he could be vindicated so much, even though he was technically vindicated at the time by all of these. Uh, Can I know, just say this? Either he's telling the truth, or he's the best liar I've ever seen because the machine loves him. And not only that, but I mean, he has such a incredible resume of incredible integrity and, uh, you know, artistic consistency. I, mean, I agree 100 percent. I can't see how a person of such moral integrity uh, and such intelligence could, could compartmentalize uh, such a part of his life. That, that's again, I don't know whether that's possible or not. I would have guessed that it was. I mean, does they did go back and collect all the ped jokes that he's ever done, and there's been quite a few. Yeah. But you'd be able to do that with everybody in this room. Oh my God. I mean, we make <laughs> they could put me away forever. Look, Fez just did this. <laughs> yeah. For <laughs> like a lot of them. Um, I think we're one uh, ten minute video of a library in Pamplona away from solving this thing. Um, I think we're close. If anything, this I would I would think it would be abuse to show this dark, weird video to children. <laughs> and this is part of my Just problem. put it up a little bit. I, Let me hear what he's rambling about. By an angry and bitter 28-year-old Dylan Farrow, publishing an open letter in the New York Times. <laughs> she obviously hates her father That's and accuses him of it. horrible things. <laughs> He counters calling her accusations untrue and disgraceful. <laughs> disgraceful. <clears throat> Who do we believe? <laughs> Writer, act, director, actress Lena Dunham weighed in on Mark Barron's uh, podcast after urging her Twitter followers to read Dylan's account. Well, it should be noted that Dunham's characters are almost exclusively uh, full of crazy impulses and unchecked demons on her primary work, which is well, the HBO series Girls. I, I wrote Many an article. people were moved uh, by Dylan's account. Dylan talks specifically of not liking being in bed with him in his underwear, or when he would lay Can his I? head in her naked lap, <laughs> or when... Good stuff. <laughs> Let me ask, why are you wearing the sniper serial killer glasses? <laughs> <laughs> like, Look, I, if, if I'm I directing a... the, the fucking movie about a serial killer, I go, Look, put on these glasses. Oh, those are perfect. Again, I'm going to do an advertisement right now for Dollar Tree. It's the only place that actually charges a dollar for reading glasses. And uh, I, It looks you like know, you should have got fucking change because <laughs> those wire rims are... I'm watching them slice through your nose as you sit there. Well, part of the problem is if you get plastic uh, uh, frames, they break if you uh, treat them badly. These are that uh, nice wire rims. Well, and that's level of deep sure. intimacy should be with, between a father and a a daughter, I personally, again, would probably err on the side of being angry and standoffish. <laughs> I don't know what God, you're great. even I was the appropriate daughter. behavior between a consenting adults is. I think most adults are vile and disgusting, but most consenting adults like that behavior. Don't get me started on celebrities, I mean, FDR, JFK, and their antics. Uh, <laughs> the infamous incident in the attic that Dylan described is left vague. It is clear Dylan despises her father. 
uh, and their relationship up until the time she was seven years old. She's had no relationship with him since. The tone of the letter has a flippant and sarcastic tone at times, accusing everyone, anyone who has associated with Alan or anyone who watches his movies as being involved in kind of a conspiracy. Right, can I just ask you something, Paul? Did this yeah. give you wood? <laughs> you seem like you have an erection <laughs> while you're sitting there. You know, it's a private room. And look, I'm not an abuser of children. I'll say that right <laughs> now. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what that sounds like? Yes. Yeah. That's what I try to point out to you time and time again. You're better just to take the punches and keep walking. You know what I mean? I, I, I've learned a lot today. Let them throw their tomatoes. I am the barber of Seville. I am the barber of Seville. Oh, Paul, you're fucking nuts. <laughs> Uh, coming up at 3 o'clock, uh, we are uh, going to jump around. We're going to jump around for a little while. But these guys will be gone, but you'll hear me with George Lopez as I do my third show in one day. Uh, this time at Town Hall with George Lopez. Here's one of the questions that was asked from the audience. Remember, just do your fucking bit. Oh, hey, hey uh, remember when you, uh, you did your uh, stand up and uh, when you when you get tired and you're like sitting in the chair, like were you, he were was going to do that. Day? He was going to do that in there, but then he thought, I can't <laughs> remember. Even when someone points at me, even when I'm set up, I'll just freeze. Is it weird for you to see from this vantage point, Fez? It's very disconcerting, yes. It's like you dropped the fucking kid out of your nuts and just totally bypassed the vagina. Like, a, like <laughs> your fucking nuts opened up and a fucking little Fez just dropped out on the floor, hitting its, out, its head. I was trying to pull up an image of this, this documentary called Stevie about, about a pedophile. Did you see that? And it, it looks it looks exactly like uh, Paul in that video. I, the same glasses. I don't think, it's not true. <laughs> what? So everybody now, Woody Allen. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Woody Allen with his large glasses, he does look like a pedophile. But <clears throat> I'm not a pedophile, sir. And that's part of the point that I'm trying to make. You are wearing the same fucking glasses <laughs> as Stevie the pedophile. Aviator fucking <laughs> he's, he's, glasses. He's still in prison in Mississippi, I think. Paulo, you should go visit him and then just yeah. switch places with him. Let him go out and get a cheeseburger. I want some time outside. <laughs> go ahead, go. I'll be fine in here for a while. You're coming back, right? Remember when you're on TV? So, Fez, I know I'm fucking tired and I've said this a, a number of times. Do we got anything else we need to plug? I think that's it. We mentioned Filtered Excellence, the town hall coming up right after this show, <laughs> George Lopez, and the Unmasked that was announced today on the ONA show. Details on how you can get tickets coming to the, the iBank. Bank. Yeah, go to the iBank for that. And um, all my music videos. And Paulo's music videos. <laughs> and Eugene Merman, a film by Ken Burns. It's all up there in the iBank today. Um, very nice picture of ONA and Jimmy, too. That was really nice when Jimmy came back in here and just wanted to, and basically said in so many words uh, that Louis Anderson is the comedian that changed his life. It was amazing. I never would have met Tice, and if it wasn't for Tice, I wouldn't have met ONA. If it wasn't for ONA, I wouldn't be able to be over on the Metal Channel right now doing an interview. Mm. Five minutes to satellite today. Yeah, five minutes. Oh, after the um, town hall I'm doing with George Lopez, switch over to the ONA channel, and then you can hear me there. It's really hashtag um, Ron Fest. It's like a Ron time loop. Ron Bennington show. It really doesn't stop. It's a, it's a Ron Fest or a Festival of Ron. <laughs> now, the boys have asked me time and time again, why won't you come in with me, Fez? What are you concerned about? Well, I mean, especially after I heard today that I had made Opie so uncomfortable sitting between him and his wife at the Village Underground for the My Wife Hates Me podcast. That I, video's up today, too, by the way. That's up at richvoss.com. Mm. 
You know, I didn't think, I thought, all right, this is just going to be more uncomfortableness, and I don't want to cause that. Well, they'd love to have you. Did he tell you at the time that he wanted to sit next to his wife, or did he just let that sit? It was a whole awkward set of circumstances. Here's something that might make you feel better, Bane Cat. Have you seen this on the iBang? I haven't seen Bane Cat yet. Go over to the iBang and come up with Bane Cat. I know we only got a couple minutes left, but this is something that I had to keep watching over and over. Give me a little volume there. Spike! Come on, boy. Come on, you know you gotta get in the car. It's cute. Why don't you ever listen? Or perhaps he's wondering why someone would give him a treat before throwing him into that cage. Peanut, you know I have to take him to the vet. Do you feel in charge? Uh, I'm the owner. And this gives you power over me? (laughs) Seriously, that's every bit as good as Batman. It's better, actually. Hey, Chris, did you thank Shelby today for improving the music on the show? I didn't thank Shelby for that, no. Go ahead, I'll sit here and do it while you... <sighs> I'm not I'll wait, I'm I mean, it took you Shelby. months and you didn't make any move. And this kid comes in with nothing but a goddamn lunchbox and a dream. <laughs> and has just turned the rejoinder music into something that has people tapping their toes. That's good. Fez hates music, and he loves these rejoiners. Good work, Shelby. I think they're the best we've ever had. What? And what do you think of Shelby? Shelby's nailing it on rejoiners. As a producer, is he the best we've ever had? Yeah. Are you? Absolutely. That's a crazy (laughs) fucking statement. I thought that was rhetorical. Well, obviously it wasn't. That's why I had to walk you through it. To give us a little bit of drama. <laughs> and then I like that Chris said, all you did is say, yeah. And Chris goes like this. I find that a ridiculous statement, sir. <laughs> Appalling, if you will. And I'm ha- and on the other end of the line is a pedophile. <laughs> and yet I'm more offended by you talking about rejoiners. I've been besmirched. Hearsay. You know what? I love that fucking term, besmirch. It's fun. You know what? I've never used used it. It's an underused word. I've never used it. Well, I just had the fuck. I just had a reason to use it because he just fucking besmirched me right in my face. I need to be besmirched more so I can fucking. You know what I mean? (laughs) Throw it out there. Yeah. You know another one? Zenith. That's another one. How do you you use it? Like I got a new TV. It's a Zenith. (laughs) (laughs) It's like something. Something. Something's really. uh, That's at their Zenith right now. I've never heard. I've never used it that way. Have you, Fez? No. You hate all music, Fess? Yeah, he does. Can't stand it. That's almost as broad as not liking the sandwiches, not having them. That's up there with liking all music, because I hate people who say this. I like all kinds of music. What do you listen to? Everything? Everything but rap and country. <laughs> I love movies. I love music. I like to look at them. I like to look at movies. <laughs> Try to guess who that was an impression of. I know it was Fez. Oh, Fez says, instead of watch, he says, look at. Look at them. He'll say it for a fucking magazine, and he'll say it for a movie. I was looking at it. Yeah, it's good to look at. <laughs> well, Polo, I really wanted to talk to you about the new Wes Anderson. Yes, sir. Did you like it? Uh, yeah, I loved it. I put it up on the intero bag. I love one filtered up there. It should be just called the Polo section. <laughs> the music's of Paul O. As you probably understand, Wes Anderson is a, somewhat of a pedophile himself. <laughs> he does the ancient dance between 40-year-olds and 3-year-olds. A dance that, even though the law is against, will not stop the dancers from behaving. Go ahead, read away, Fuzzy. Dan Perlman, thanks for being here, buddy. Thanks so much for having me. His web series, Moderately Funny, is on YouTube and at Facebook.com slash Moderately Money. So that's new episodes every Sunday at Dan J. Perlman on Twitter. Go see Louis Anderson. Wait, before that, I don't like to compare my ex-interns. But Dan has left hands bananas in the dust. <laughs> <laughs> this proves it. Yeah. This proves it. Today's appearance. I love hands bananas. Oh, P-E-R-L, by the way. Not P-E-A-L. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God. Fix oh, it. Oh, my God. Fix it, fucko. Oh, my God.
soon. Go see Louis Anderson tonight at Levity Live in West Nyack, New York, and Jay Moore at the Brigada Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. That's tonight. And coming up, George Lopez Town Hall, hosted by Ron Bennington. Let me say it by the, those two men, too. Uh, Louis and Jay, God bless their hearts. They were so fucking fun today. All right, I'm going to go home and take a nap. No, I'm going to listen to George Lopez for an hour. Wink, wink. And then I'm going to take a nap. That's it for us. See you guys on the flip side. True to the West and always. Go read Paul O. Up on the iBang. Filtered Excellence. Up on the iBang. Bane Cat. Up on the iBang. And that's the end of my show. Donk.